These are the drywall tapes I'm going to be testing. First is paper tape. Paper tape is one of the most common types of drywall tape. It has a crease down the center for folding into corners. Next is Fiba Fuse drywall tape. It's a relatively newer type of drywall tape. It's made of a dense network of interwoven fiberglass fibers. It says it's 70% stronger provides mold and mildew resistance, and also eliminates blisters and bubbles. Next up is straight flex. Typically, straight flex is used for 45 degree corners, but it can also be used for reinforcing weak joints. It's made of rigid vinyl with a furry backing for extra adhesion. This is fiberglass drywall tape, otherwise known as fiber tape or mesh tape. It's constructed in a fiberglass grid with an adhesive backing. This is fiber tape. It's also a fiber tape or a mesh tape. Like fiber tape, fiber tape also has an adhesive backing. Looking closer at these two types of fiber tape or mesh tape, the main difference is, is the fiber tape has a denser weave and also the fibers are flat fibers, whereas the fibers of fiber tape are round. So what that means is the fiber tape is visibly thinner than the fiber tape, although I'm not sure if the camera is showing that. I made 12 testing boards using a combination of different types of tapes embedded with different types of drywall taping compound. First, I cut the sheets down the center to make a joint. Then, I applied each type of drywall tape. I let that dry and then I added three coats of a finishing compound. Sanded it smooth. Then I applied three coats of a paint and primer. Let me explain the three groups of boards. On the first group I embedded all the tapes using a drying compound, specifically a taping compound. On the middle group, I embedded all the drywall tapes using a setting compound, otherwise known as fast set or hot mud. Specifically, I used ProSet, which is very similar to Durabond, another common setting compound. On the last set of boards, I applied the two types of fiber tape, or drywall mesh tape, if you will, directly to the drywall using its own adhesion. This is how the test is going to work. I'll take each sheet Put them evenly across these pails. I'll take these weights, then I'll stack them one at a time on the board until we reach failure. This camera will capture what's happening underneath the board, and this light will provide contrast so we can see what's happening. 
Then when the board fails, it'll land on this pad. Through the video, you are going to see tests where the drywall split before the tape did, or you might see where a tape cracked at a point during the test, but never actually split in two before the drywall itself split in two. Let me explain now why that is. Some tapes are relatively unsplittable, but not necessarily uncrackable. For example, let's look at fiber mesh tape. It can't actually split apart under any real life conditions, but what it can do is warp, it can stretch, it can become longer, it can become wider. It has a high tensile strength, but a low rigidity. On the other hand, let's look at paper tape. It can split into two, but it can't stretch or warp. It has a lower tensile strength, but much higher rigidity. The stretching and warping of a tape's low rigidity can produce a crack. Likewise, the splitability of a tape's low tensile strength can produce a crack. These factors will affect how these tapes perform. It also means that in the test, some tapes will produce a surface crack, but they will never actually split apart, nor will they ever. The amount of force to make them split in two would far exceed any stress they would ever receive in the real world conditions, especially if it exceeds the strength of the drywall itself. The most important information to be gathered here is when the joint produced a crack, and not necessarily when the tape physically split into two pieces. To get the best camera angles for this test, I had to film each test individually. You may want to write down the results. This first test is with fiber tape, mesh tape, placed directly on the drywall using its own adhesion. Four pounds, five pounds, six pounds, eight pounds, nine pounds, Ten pounds, eleven pounds, twelve pounds, thirteen pounds, fourteen pounds, fifteen pounds, sixteen pounds, seventeen pounds, eighteen pounds, nineteen pounds, twenty pounds, twenty one pounds. So the tape cracked relatively early. That crack has kind of pinched back together now that the tension is gone, but it was there. And the tape never split apart for the reasons I explained earlier. And I kept adding weight and then eventually the drywall itself failed. This is fiber tape, the other type of drywall mesh tape. Again, placed directly to the drywall using its own adhesion, no compound. Four pounds. 5 pounds, 6 pounds, 7 pounds, 8 pounds, 9 pounds, 10 pounds, 11 pounds, 12 pounds, 13 pounds, 14 pounds, 16 pounds, 17 pounds, 18 pounds, 19 pounds, 20 it cracked at the joint the crack is less visible now because the tension is gone the tape never actually split into two pieces for the reasons i explained earlier then as i added more weight finally the drywall itself failed this is drywall paper tape embedded onto the drywall using a drying compound specifically a taping compound One pound, two pounds, three pounds, four pounds. These are the two pound bags, so that's six pounds, eight pounds, ten pounds, twelve pounds, fourteen pounds, sixteen pounds, seventeen pounds, eighteen pounds. So what happened is the joint cracked and then with more weight it split apart for the reasons I explained earlier. 
This is Fiber Fuse drywall tape embedded with a drying compound, specifically a taping compound. Two pounds, four pounds, five pounds, six pounds, seven pounds, eight pounds, nine pounds, ten pounds, eleven pounds, twelve pounds, thirteen pounds, fourteen pounds, fifteen pounds, sixteen pounds, seventeen pounds, eighteen pounds, nineteen pounds, twenty pounds, twenty one pounds. 22 pounds. This tape never cracked, despite there being enough tension on the board to crack the drywall itself. If your house is shifting and bending so much that your drywall itself is cracking, then you have way bigger issues. This is drywall fiber tape, otherwise known as mesh tape, embedded on the drywall using a drying compound, specifically a taping compound. Two pounds, four pounds, five pounds, six pounds, seven pounds, eight pounds, nine pounds, ten pounds, eleven pounds, twelve pounds, thirteen pounds, fourteen pounds, fifteen pounds, sixteen pounds, seventeen pounds, eighteen pounds, nineteen pounds, twenty pounds, twenty one pounds. This joint cracked, but the tape never actually physically split in two for the reasons I explained earlier. Then, as more weight was added, the drywall itself failed. This is drywall fiber tape, the other type of mesh tape, embedded on the drywall using a drying compound, specifically a taping compound. Two pounds, four pounds, six pounds. 7 pounds, 8 pounds, 9 pounds, 10 pounds, 11 pounds, 12 pounds, 13 pounds, 14 pounds, 15 pounds, 16 pounds, 17 pounds, 18 pounds, 19 pounds, 20 pounds, 21 pounds, This joint did not crack, despite there being enough tension on the board to crack the drywall itself. And if the drywall in your home is cracking in half, then you should probably call an engineer. This is drywall straight flex, embedded onto the drywall using a drying compound, specifically a taping compound. Two pounds. 4 pounds, 6 pounds, 8 pounds, 10 pounds, 11 pounds, 12 pounds, 13 pounds, 14 pounds, 15 pounds, 16 pounds, 17 pounds, 18 pounds, 19 pounds, 20 pounds, 21 pounds. Very little surprise here, the joint did not crack at all despite there being enough tension on the board to crack the drywall itself. This is drywall fiber tape, otherwise known as mesh tape, embedded onto the drywall using a setting compound, specifically ProSet 90. Two pounds, four pounds, six pounds, seven pounds, eight pounds, nine pounds, 10 pounds, 11 pounds, 12 pounds, 13 pounds, 14 pounds, 15 pounds, 16 pounds, 17 pounds, 18 pounds, 19 pounds, 20 pounds, 21 pounds, The results are the joint cracked, but the tape never physically split apart for the reasons I explained earlier. Then as more weight was added, 
Eventually, the drywall itself failed. This is fiber tape, the other type of mesh tape, embedded onto the drywall using a setting compound, specifically ProSet 90. Two pounds, four pounds, six pounds, eight pounds, nine pounds, 10 pounds, 11 pounds, 12 pounds, 13 pounds, 14 pounds, 15 pounds, 16 pounds, 17 pounds, 18 pounds, 19 pounds, 20 pounds. Despite all that tension, enough tension to crack the drywall itself, this joint did not crack. This is fiber fuse tape embedded onto the drywall using a setting compound, specifically ProSet 90. Two pounds, four pounds, six pounds, eight pounds, nine pounds, 10 pounds, 11 pounds, 12 pounds, 13 pounds, 14 pounds, 15 pounds, 16 pounds, 17 pounds, 18 pounds, 19 pounds, 20 pounds, 20 pounds. Despite there being enough tension on the board to crack the drywall itself in two, the joint did not crack. This is drywall paper tape embedded onto the drywall using a setting compound, specifically ProSet 90. Two pounds, four pounds, six pounds, eight pounds, nine pounds, 10 pounds, 11 pounds, 12 pounds, 13 pounds, 14 pounds, 15 pounds, 16 pounds, 17 pounds, 18 pounds, 19 pounds, 20 pounds, 21 pounds, 22 pounds. The joint cracked, but unlike with taping compound, the joint did not split apart. As more weight was added, the drywall itself eventually failed. The joint remained stronger than the drywall. This is drywall straight flex, embedded onto the drywall using a setting compound, specifically ProSet 90. Two pounds, four pounds, six pounds, eight pounds, 10 pounds, 12 pounds, 14 pounds, 15 pounds, 16 pounds, 17 pounds, 18 pounds, 19 pounds, 20 pounds, 21 pounds, 22 pounds. So no surprise here, there's no cracks on the joint. The joint was made stronger than the drywall itself, and as more weight was added, the drywall proved to be the weakest link.